So I want to do a quick video about some of my Venus flytrap flower stalk cuttings. Um, and the story goes is that um, a few months ago, uh, I made a video about these cuttings. And I never really posted that video because it was kind of a disappointing video. Um, basically, I just said I didn't really get a good success rate. It's kind of a lot of failures and I didn't really know what I was doing wrong. Uh, but it turns out what I did wrong was I just didn't wait long enough. And after waiting a few more months, I got uh, a lot more... Uh, cuttings to sprout from the, the little flower stock cuttings. So yeah, so I guess to get some context first I'm gonna splice in the original video so you could see how they look like a few months ago and then uh, how they look and I'll go through how they look like now. So that if you're gonna do these cuttings on your own, um, you know, I'll show you my method and you could try yourself and then you know you kind of know how long you have to wait in order to get them to sprout. So yeah, let me splice in that video right now. These are just uh, flower stock cuttings. So all the flower stalks I have where I cut them off, I try to plant them see if I get any little plantlets. It seemed real easy on some like YouTube videos I saw, but I don't know if I got any to stick. Uh, I think I'm just cultivating mold here. Uh, yeah, they are... I don't see, I don't see anything. All I see is mold. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. Uh... Maybe we'll take a look at the other pot. This is the other pot, similar story, just a bunch of flower stock cuttings. Hey, I actually see some in here. See, look, look at that guy. That's a little plantlet. Okay, so that one's that one's doing okay. That one's from the pygmy, actually, the one on the windowsill, the larger pygmy. So that one has a sprout. Uh. I think I see on this flower stalk, there's a little plantlet on this flower stalk. I don't know if I get the focus on it, but to the right here, that's a little plantlet right there. And that is from uh, King Henry. So all of these flower stalks died, but this guy, this flower clump, actually on the flower, have some little plantlets. Okay, so that's more than I expected. I think there's a little leaf growing on this guy too. I think I see a little leaf coming off the end there. That is from a uh, Southwest Giant. So this container did, did okay. Oh, I see a whole bunch of little plantlets on this flower. So one there, one over there. So that one's doing fine. That one's from Phalanx. So yeah, that's probably the second flower that I cut off there from the Phalanx. Uh, Guava saw too. It's not doing too hot. I'm just cultivating mold. But yeah, I mean, okay, so it's better than nothing. I have a few strikes of some of these cultivars. So yeah, uh, I don't know why this one didn't do too hot. Maybe it's just random chance. Um, but yeah, uh, I guess we'll have to wait a bit longer. Some of them, they're still green. So as long as it's still green, I'll keep it in there. <laughs> and then after they all get moldy, maybe I need to toss this out. All right, so you probably already saw the video of uh, these guys a few months ago. Let's take a look at them now. You can see uh, got a lot of cuttings that sprouted in here. I know, I mean, there's some that didn't sprout. Um, and I think this pot I made a mistake on. I let the whole thing dry out for a bit. So uh, originally this King Henry over here had a whole bunch of Venus flytraps cutting sprout on top of a flower stalk. It actually wasn't even touching the, the media, soil media at all, but since I let the pot dry out, it kind of got set back a bit. And also the pygmy, originally I think the pygmy was the one that sprouted first in my video, but since I let it dry out, it got kind of set back a bit. But you know, it's coming back. But yeah, King Henry, those cuttings kind of unfortunately died. There was a whole bunch of them too. It was like a huge clump like this, but it all dried out and died. So yeah, one mistake is Never let them dry out. <laughs> that goes for most carnivorous plants, by the way. You never want the pots to dry out. Um, and then let me take a look at the other pot. So yeah, lots of little cuttings. So all I had to do was wait a bit longer, it seems like. So in terms of the cuttings that I planted vertically versus ones that just laid flat on the soil, I don't think there was any like advantage to doing one over the other. I see cuttings sprout from both methods. Maybe the ones that lay down flat actually grew more cuttings. Um, you could see there's way more like this one you see right here where it's still green you could see all these little nodules on it those were all those will all sprout into little new venus flytrap um, babies so yeah so maybe the ones that you lay down flat you can actually get more return from them um but i can't really say for sure because i didn't really do like a very fair comparison there might be just more that i laid down flat than i than i poked directly into the soil so yeah so next time i'll probably just lay more of them down flat. It seemed like it was doing okay. I mean, see, for example, this one grew from a vertically stuck-in piece, um, and it grew fine. 
but hey, maybe you might get more if you lay them down flat. So in terms of what I tried growing, there's some low giants in here. Got a little plantlet in there. This is a one called Plenty Traps, so that's just some random one from eBay. Someone named theirs Plenty Traps. You know, you can't really tell that apart from a typical, in my opinion. But whatever. Uh, SD Drake was actually in this little pie here. And this one I actually didn't get any successes from. So, you know, just a luck thing, I guess. DC XL seemed to be doing okay. And yeah, I guess, uh, like, e even like this one that was like browning and stuff, um, still has, you know, little little nodules growing out of it. So, so as long as it's, it's, as long as it's green at all, I think there's still hope. So yeah, I'll, I'll probably keep it in the um, in the tray for a bit longer just to get more planets out. Uh, this is a pinnacle. So yeah, so I've been using like these little sphagnum moss bits to divide up the sections, so I don't have to use more pots and stuff. Uh, but it was it was getting kind of risky because I stuck one of these kind of sideways and it kind of bled into um, this this other section. Section. Uh, luckily, when I pulled it out, all the little planets came with it, so I was able to tell you know. Well, which section they came from, but it was risking it. So next time I'll probably um, divide them up a bit better with maybe some more physical barriers to keep them divided. So that's that's one thing to watch out for because like you know even if you stick them straight down into the soil, um, over time they some some of them topple over and then they kind of bleed into another one. Um, so for example, like this guy right here with these little nodules, when they grow, this thing will become like a little bush of new fly traps and you can't really tell if it's in this section or in this section. So keep that in mind if you want to use one of these trays. Um, so yeah, so my methodology was uh, I just got one of these food trays from like, you know, the grocery store. I used 50, 50, um, half, half perlite and peat. Um, so nothing too special. And then it's it's undrained, so uh, it, it stays really moist. And I, I watered it a lot, so it was very, very um, soggy when I put the cuttings in there. And then I covered it with saran wrap and I let it just stay underneath the lights for a while. Um, it was growing a lot of mold. Um, so I did use some fungicide. I'll post the name of the fungicide I used um, in the in the video. I don't remember what the name of it. It was like the uh, yeah I can't I can't remember off the top of my head. So I did use some fungicide to try to control the mold a bit. So it was getting a bit moldy. But other than that, like you know, originally I, I thought the mold would just kill everything, but it didn't really affect the plants too much. It was just you know the the mold was just growing on the parts that were all black. So it's not like they were eating the plants, the green ones. Um, and I think there's a little section in the middle here. The middle section is the G14. That one's growing some plantlets. Uh, ginormous, doing okay in the corner there. Lots of new little ones, starting from like this stalk. You see how this stalk is all black? Even though it's all, it's all black, I still got new plantlets coming out of it. Um, and this one is Pinnacle. Looks like Pinnacle is doing great. So the, the pin, like I didn't really touch any of these, these guys at all. So you know, even the layouts. It's probably similar to what I had originally, uh, but the pinnacle one is one I did touch because, you know, as I said, one of the plantlets was, the flower stalks was kind of stuck in at the side, so I had to pull it out and replant it. Um, SL15 has a few little plantlets growing. It's taking its time, I guess, but it seems I got some coming out of it. And then back to the low giant at the corner. So yeah, so overall, on this side, uh, the southwest giant is the one that's doing the best. King Henry was doing good, but yeah, I remember I let it dry out. And then uh, Phalanx, Phalanx uh, got a few little babies in there. Also, it kind of you know got set back because of it the drying out. I mean, the whole pot dried out, so everything got set back a bit. And then uh, the Guava Sawtooth, so I don't think I ever got any sprouts coming out of that at all. But yeah, the, the Pinnacle is weird because, uh, or sorry, not Pinnacle, Phalanx is weird because if you look at the flowers, um, get the focus right, the flowers never opened up. Um, they're all like, the petals all twist onto themselves, so it's a weird genetic mutation in this particular cultivar. But yeah, it makes it kind of useless to get it to flower. I just wanted to get some seeds for some genetic variation. It's not, not like you can get the same cultivar from seeds, you have to clone them with cuttings. But yeah, I wanted some seeds to try to get some weird genetics out of it, but you know, turns out it doesn't work that well. Plus, the flowering kind of took its toll on the plant and it got real small. You can see it's kind of like suffering a bit. And it was a, it was a double flower stalk, so you can see where I did the cuttings from, it's from this other flower stalk. There was two. I cut that one, but I should just cut both. You know, you live and learn. Next time, fan lengths is not a good candidate to let flower. Uh, this one I probably should have cut also. I think this one's an A2. I'll probably try cutting it. The flower stalk is still green, but since it's been been a while, um, I mean the, the little seed pods are already you know, black. I never really pollinated it, so I didn't really get any seeds from it anyways. Um, but since it's an old flower stalk, I'm not sure if doing a cutting out of it right now would do anything. Um, probably need some more fresher stalks. I'll try anyways. Get another pot of half peat, half perlite, and just stick them in. You know, it's free. Or, uh, might as well. 
So yeah, so that's my story with my, with my flower stalk cuttings. Uh, I'll post a timeline so you guys get an idea of how long it would take. Um, I already said what I used in soil, 50% peat, perlite, undrained pot, and then just cut it, covered it with um, the saran wrap. And I kept it very, very wet. And then there was some mold, so I'll post whatever um, fungicide I used. Um, other than that, it seemed like it was a big success. So I'll try this again next year. Uh, you know, might as well, because it's free plants, right? Anyways, uh, thanks for watching. And hopefully, you know, this will help you guys out in the future too.